Hello, everyone. I am Atsushi Kakugawa from Mitsumeka University, Japan. Today, I'm going to talk about a highly backdrivable robotic arm using low friction and high accuracy cycloidal geared motors named Alpha. Many conventional industrial robots are comprised of electric motors and strain wave gearing. The torque can be increased due to a high reduction ratio in one stage. These reducers are designed to have a backlash of approximately three arc min or less to suppress the lost motion of the robot, which is minuscule. However, the joints of the robot are stiff due to an increase in static friction, making it challenging to move by a small external force. As a result, the robot becomes increasingly rigid against external force. If the robot allows active mechanical contact with the environment, the several advantages are obtained. It is possible to realize collaborative work corresponding to the force given by humans and other machines. This is especially useful when multiple robots perform collaborative work involving contact with each other. High precision work can be achieved by using mechanical constraints, for example, a straight line can be drawn using a ruler, just as humans do. The characteristic of the object and the environment can be recognized by contact, for example, by applying force, structural coordination, viscoelastic property recognition, and etc. Robots with high reduction ratio gears, such as strain wave gearing, have small backlash, but inherently stiff joints. Therefore, force torque sensor feedback control is employed to make them more flexible. In this method, flexibility can be artificially adjusted as needed, which is well known as impedance control. Indeed, many startup and traditional robot companies have already sold robots based on this method, as it makes effective use of the advantages of current industrial robots. However, certain limitations exist because the force torque sensor is expensive and easily damaged, and there is a response delay in the sensor feedback. On the other hand, the problem of stiff joints in high reduction ratio geared motors is solved by installing elastic materials in series. The flexibility is determined by the properties of the elastic material, and thus it is not variable stiffness. The structure is both simple and unbreakable, however, and there is no response delay of sensor feedback. This solution is a series elastic actuator called SEA, and certain startup companies have adapted it. SEA tends to induce vibration of the endpoint when the robot repeats moving and stopping at high speed. Therefore, the stiffness of the recent most SEA is designed to be high. If friction, which constitutes an uncertain physical phenomenon, can be eliminated, the motion of the robot can be specified by electromagnetic and mechanical models. Therefore, we focused on the combination of low friction gears and electric motors. Empirically, it has been demonstrated that gears with a reduction ratio of 10 or less are backdrivable. However, even for high reduction ratios of 100 or more, if backlash is allowed by devising a gear shape or increasing the distance between the shafts, friction in the sliding part is reduced and it remains backdrivable. The reduction ratio alone does not directly affect back drivability. So we use the term low friction geared electric motor in this study. Previously, many low friction geared motors have already been developed. However, previous works with a high back drivable system sacrificed positioning accuracy. For example, joint backlash is 15 arc min or more. In addition, Quantitative evaluation of back drivable torque and positioning accuracy has not yet been discussed. Even though some newly emerging companies claim that the positioning accuracy of their products is plus minus 0.1 millimeter, no evidence is shown. Therefore, we present a new robotic arm with 
high back drivability and a low backlash geared system based on the cycloidal drive. Positioning repeatability and accuracy of force and moment applied to the endpoint are assessed by experiments. Force and moment are calculated by joint torque obtained by built-in current sensors of motor driver. In our study, to achieve high back durability, a low friction reducer based on the cycloidal drive was developed. To suppress the rotor inertia and viscosity, 20 of the reduction ratio and inner rotor type motor were selected, even though the general back drivable actuator is the outer rotor type. A motor TQ robot drive with high torque density is used to compensate for the lack of torque at low reduction ratios. In our cycloidal drive, instead of using outer pins, our internal ring gear is used and the gear teeth is precisely designed to reduce the friction. The axis four still needs refinement, but for the, the axis one to three, the backlash is one arc mean and the torque required for back drive is as low as one Newton meter. This is an overview of the developed robotic arm. One link has about 0.3 meter length. In the experiments, we verified whether or not the robot can change the joint stiffness by only tuning the feedback gains, positioning repeatability, and accuracy of force and moment applied to the endpoint calculated by joint torque. This torque is obtained by built in current sensors. For the motor control, Somanet Node 400 by Synapticon Corporation is mounted on the robot. The simple PID position control law, originally embedded in motor driver, was adapted. EtherCAT was used to send a command and to receive a signal from the robot. For high-speed communication, PCI Express card was installed. Windows 10 and Visual Studio 2019 were used for integrated development environment. To make the endpoint of the robotic arm smoothly trace the target trajectory, the target position and orientation are given by the cubic polynomial function with respect to time. Those target position and orientation are given to the typical inverse kinematics, then the joint angles are obtained. Our developed robotic arm can achieve variable stiffness by tuning the feedback gain of the controller. First, the variable stiffness of the developed robotic arm are verified by experiments. The table lists the gain values in soft mode. As you can see the video, the robotic arm with low P gain behaves like a spring, even though there is no real spring in the joints. Because the joint stiffness is too low, the damping vibration does not converge during the motion, and the endpoint position is not fixed. Theoretically, feedback gains can be reduced further and set to zero. However, the robotic arm cannot support its own weight with low feedback gains. On the other hand, the table lists the gain values in rigid mode. As you can see here, the joint stiffness can be theoretically increased up to approximately 50 times. Increasing the joint stiffness will reduce the vibration of the endpoint even when moving at high speed. The gains cannot be increased infinitely. This is because the joint torque against the angular displacement reached its limit. To increase the stiffness, a higher power motor needs to be selected, but this will lead to increase in weight and size of the robot. The feedback gains given in the rigid mode constitute the limitation of our developed robot. In the robot performance test, the position and postures of the developed robotic arm are evaluated. Two markers were attached to the arm end to measure positioning repeatability. Center position and orientation of the marker were captured by two camera and image processing. In this experiment, a pick and place movement as a typical movement of industrial robotic arms was replicated. From the experiments, considering the resolution of the camera, positioning repeatability in X and Y coordinates of the two cameras can be recalculated as plus minus 0.1 millimeter 
plus minus 0.125 millimeter, plus minus 0.05 millimeter, plus minus 0.15 millimeter, respectively. Since the reducer's backlash is minuscule, less than one arc mean, and the encoder resolution is sufficiently high, the error is essentially expected to be smaller than measured. However, the link structure was made by sheet metal and assembled by screws, and thus these backlash were assumed to lead to the error. Finally, force and moment of the endpoint calculated by the joint torque were verified. Force sensor was attached to the endpoint of the robot. An aluminum plate was fixed to the base of the robot. The distance between the origin of the global coordinate system and the aluminum plate is 0.3 meter. Since the target X position was set to 0.31 meter, the endpoint sinks 0.01 meter into the aluminum plate. In reality, this does not occur because the plate is suf sufficiently stiff. Instead, joint torques increase and they depend on the feedback gains. In general, industrial robots with low back variability cannot perform the same task using only position control. This cycle was repeated a total of five times. The graph plots the resulting target and measured joint angles during the pushing movement. Three waves can be observed when the endpoint sinks into the aluminum plate. Target and real angles are not identical because the movement is interrupted by the aluminum plate. The axis one, two, three worked well, but the axis four endpoint did not follow the target trajectory. This is because the friction of the reducer is much larger than that of other joints. The joint does not rotate as long as the integral term of the control law is not accumulated to exceed the static friction. The cycloidal drive used for the axis four is still under development, and thus it will be refined in the near future. These graphs show the measured torque of each joint during the pushing movement. At approximately 10 seconds, the endpoint first touched the aluminum plate. At this moment, a spike-like wave was observed in all joints. When the robot does not contact with any external environment, torque was generated to support its own weight. In this experiment, the torque of the axis one should be zero, irrespective of the robotic state. However, a slight movement around the z-axis was generated due to the slight orientation error of the endpoint. These graphs show a comparison between the force measured directly from the force sensor and estimated from the joint torques. The estimated force and moment are calculated by using the inverse transpose Jacobian matrix. Since the robotic arm starts movement from a singular configuration, the absolute values of Fy and Fz were ex extremely high from 0 to 3 seconds and from 25 to 28 seconds, respectively. Ideally, the arm end should slide in only the X direction because only X target position changed. Therefore, X, Y, F, X, Z, and M, Y should be zero. However, since the endpoint was slightly tilted, F, Y, F, Z, and M, Y were not zero. From the results, Although Fy and Fz are not identical to Fy and Fz respectively, the peak value of Fx and My were similar to that of Fx and My respectively. This is because the gear friction of axis 4 is not negligible and the endpoint did not perfectly push the plate in the x direction. Since the dynamic effect and the gravity were not considered, estimated force and moment were not zero, even when the endpoint does not touch the plate. Canceling those influences by applying a robot model, it can be eliminated to some extent. That's all my presentation. Thank you very much. And this presentation is based on results obtained from a project commissioned by NEDO.